Hello and welcome to another episode of the Auto Trader Podcast. My name is Wendy Lesishi. And I'm George Mini. And when are we going to change this jingle? <laughs> we're working on it. I promise you we're going to bring in something bombastic uh, for the next... Bombastic? Bombastic for the next... It you know, sounds like <laughs> evil. <laughs> <laughs> it's good. I've seen, I've seen, um, you know, we've been working on a new... A new show. Let me just put like. What that. is all the cluck and dagger about? I've been hearing about this now for weeks, and I haven't seen anything. And you know, we're, you try, like we're trying to secret, things. secret, secret. We're trying to like secret things. service. Once, once <laughs> it's ready, <laughs> once it's ready, um, I'll definitely <clears throat> um, sort of you know we'll, we'll, we'll show everybody. We'll reveal it nicely for everyone. Did you see that blue light brigade video that's going around? I did see it. Um, had a few discussions with some colleagues. Oh. Um, there's a lot of people, who, you know, Twitter is the worst place to be on oh, yeah. when it comes to these sort of things because everyone has an opinion, but they don't understand what the law is and um, what is a kind of degree of force that someone can What, what did those guys do to get them to kind of react in that way? Yeah, it's hard to say, but the, the way the conversation is going right now is that they were blocking them or impeding them from essentially being uh, the Blue Light uh, Brigade. Mm. Um, but, you know, looking at the video, I think there was a lot of force but Probably until I know much, what's eh? going on, um, I think it's a, it's safe to assume that civilians should not be treated that way, one. No. But also that the Blue Light Brigade has um, a job to do, yeah. ultimately. So yeah. let's see what happens. Um, but you can't treat people like that. No, no, no. Sense. I mean, it's, um, yeah, it's it's not, uh, it's terrible. But uh, yeah, I, I mean, I, I've watched bits and pieces of the video. I must go and watch the, pro- the thing properly. Mm. Mm. But uh, yeah, it's... Um, yeah, oh, stuff like that shouldn't happen. Either yeah. way. Yeah. I think yeah, there's let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. Um but I'm sure the, the you know the the internet and the the justin will take care of it oh, swiftly. Yeah, you know, the internet blew up because of it. Did you watch the race? I did. Um how do I let me before we even get into that, how do you feel about the season so far? Because I think you speak it you speak about it in in isolation each race to what's actually going on. Um I, I think it's a, it's becoming it's becoming a, a um, everybody else race. So we know what's going to happen at the top. Let's see what happens with the rest. Yes. So yeah. I'm not even I'm even watching Red Bull anymore. Yeah. I'm only watching the race between Mercedes, yeah, Ferrari, and Ferrari, and, uh, yeah, and Aston Martin. Martin, and now McLaren. Did you see Alonso's? Yeah. Uh, um, not Alonso, uh, Norris. Uh, um, oh, was Norris. Oh, yeah, Norris. Norris's um, stellar performance. Fantastic. Uh, do you think there was upgrades in the car? Yeah, I mean, t- two weeks of upgrades now. A lot of the teams who did it the previous week. Did uh, Piastri not have those upgrades? I'm not too sure. I think he had. He may have had it the week before. But the, the most important thing is it takes a little bit of time before the team and the engineers understand what the performance is. Yeah. Um, and then obviously the driver needs to click with those with any of those those changes. Uh, you know what? I'm starting to see this more and more. Um, driver gelling with the car mm-hmm. is a big it's deal. Super important. Now. Super important. You know, look at uh, um, Australian dude. Um, used to be for Red Bull. Uh, Daniel Ricciardo. Daniel Ricciardo. Look at Daniel Ricciardo. Did reasonably well in Red Bull. Okay. Mm. Went on to McLaren. McLaren. Yeah. Did terrible. dismally badly. Yeah. Just didn't did gel with the car. Yeah. yeah. I mean, he's a good driver. Um, you know, is the same? Did the same fate befall uh, Mick Schumacher? Mm. Like, was Perhaps. it just a car problem? Perhaps. And we're seeing it across the teams now. You know, it used to be like, okay, maybe this this one team, but there's so many different things that the the teams are adding to the vehicles mm. that that difference of that impact of how that in, in, in impacts your driving style. We're seeing that now vastly across the entire grid, um, and it's showing what's the the difference between skill and and, and less skill, I guess. Um, but so the one thing I want to talk about, talking about Red Bull. Yeah. And this is the difference between um, um, number two Red Bull driver, Perez, uh, Perez and, and, and uh, Max. Mm. Did you see the, st- the, the the strategic thinking of Max when he took What's the lead? The, yeah. Um, by holding back on the DRS detection point. Okay. Did you see that? I didn't. I didn't. Yeah. Okay. So basically, on the one uh, one corner, he. Um, you know, because the detection point dictates with who's who going to get the DRS, DRS, right? Yeah. So, so he was he was behind, and he 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 passed um, uh, Leclerc at one point, right before the DRS detection point, before the corner. Does that okay? hold back? And then he decided to hold back yeah, so when he when the when the DRS detection point came around, yeah. right? But he was beside Leclerc. Yeah. 
Yeah. Okay, so very good spot to be, but he, but he knew he was the one who was going to get DRS on the next straight. Yeah. And then as they took the corner, he could have been in front, but then Leclerc would have got DRS, yeah. right? So he stopped Leclerc from getting DRS and then passed him on the straight. So, yeah, how but do you Perez, think about that? <laughs> no, no, but, but, but Perez <laughs> yeah. did not think about that until yeah. probably about four laps later. Yeah. Somebody must have told him. And that's the difference between a world champion and a non-world champion. Go back two years and we saw Max doing the exact same thing with, with Hamilton. I mean, they used to josh for DRS zones and detection zones all the time. It was one of the big differences in the last three races when they were going for, um, it was 2020, when they were going for Hamilton's eight and, and Max's one. Yeah. Um, so that's a mindset thing. And you can see it in... It's not a mindset thing. The, it's a smartness results. thing. Mm. Perez just doesn't have it. Yeah, he Sorry. He hasn't had it for a while. Yeah, yeah. He's never had it. He's never going to have it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you never know. You no. never know. <laughs> you gotta, you, you gotta, you, the, the, uh, in my opinion, you got it or you don't. You either have or you don't. You don't have or you don't. That's you, talent. You can it's learn. Proper. You can learn. No, fair enough. You're going to learn. But you know, by that time, he's like, you know. It's too late. 55 I mean, years old. Yeah. And it's not, it's not to say that the other drivers aren't also learning at the same time. So, you know. Yeah. Like, what is the next thing that Verstappen's going to think about that Perez doesn't think about? Mm. So now it's, okay. So he's learned about DRS detection zones. So what? <laughs> okay, but now it's the next thing. <laughs> yeah. So when you're learning at a rate that is slower than your teammate, yeah. you're never going to beat him. Yeah, never. You're always behind, right? You're always, always behind. Four races behind. Yes, you're becoming smarter. You're learning. Fair enough, but you're never going to be on the edge. Yeah, I don't think. For sure. I mean, ultimately, the race was once again a one horse one one horse race. Yeah. Um, and yeah, we have to do something about these cars. Anyway, all just far too slow. what are we talking about today? Extra. So we've spoken about extras before, um, but right now I saw an interesting, an interesting article which spoke about the, the you know kind of the ten most expensive extras and the impact it has. On You're talking about extras on a car, right? Yes, that's correct. Um, so I'm not talking about um, the typical warranty interest. I'm talking about an actual extra, so feature on the vehicle. Features on the vehicle, like things you can put on when you when you buy the car. Hundred percent. Factory um, fitted extras. Do you believe in getting extras in terms of creature comforts? Um, For sure. I mean, um, so 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 let's talk quickly about uh, Tesla, right? Yes. The, the the problem with extras, outside of Tesla's environment, the problem with extras is every car down that production line has to be built differently. Differently. Yeah. Okay. So that's a problem with extras. It pushes up the cost of the vehicle. Mm-hmm. Not for the extras. Just the the base the, the, cost. The of base the cost of building cars goes up because they have to do different things on the same production line. Yeah. Fit a sunroof where another car doesn't have a sunroof. Put an umbrella in where another car doesn't have an umbrella. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. So so I'm not so sure that the world of extras um, on cars is going to be the future. So because look at what Tesla's doing. Yeah. The car comes fully stacked. One size fits all. Um, yeah. And you, I mean, there's some there's some OEMs where you can turn an extra on and off, right? But they're all kind of built the same. I think well, it's, it's Tesla's like that. You, you, oh, okay. you know, in the future, you're going to be able to buy your extra. Maybe yeah. the sunroof is sealed shut. Mm. And you want to turn it on, you pay. Mm. Mm. You know, um, so the sunroof is there. You just got to open it. <laughs> okay, I see. <laughs> That's a bit cruel, yeah. <laughs> no, it's not cruel. It's like you didn't pay for it, but no, the it, costs are lower. Yeah. When, you when it's from a trick ball, you can... You can, you can subscribe, subscribe to it for, for a month. month. Yes, yeah. I think that the world of cars are g- probably going to go there yeah. where everything is going to be um, on a subscription basis. We had, when we spoke, when we had the subscription episode, we actually spoke about that yeah. exact thing. I think it was BMW or something where um, they were considering all cars exactly to your point, have every single feature that you want, and then you can just turn it on and off. Um, you know, I, I see a future in that. Anyway, what are the most expensive extras that you have come across? So I, I have a list of 10 extras which I, I found were, were a bit insane. Um, um, and I, I'll, take, I'll take you down all of them. So the first one is with regards to Rolls-Royce's umbrella. I mean, we've all seen Rolls-Royce, the little umbrella that comes with pretty much every single Rolls Royce. Of course, you can get different ones with crystals. And so then how's it an extra if it comes with every Rolls Royce? Because there's levels. There's levels to, to extras as well. That you'll get, you get your stock standard umbrella and then you get a proper Rolls Royce umbrella. Oh. And the proper Rolls Royce umbrella, guess how much that costs? Well, I'm looking at it. 13 grand. 13,000 rand. Um, <sighs> I don't know how I feel about that. 
13,000 rand for an umbrella. 13,000 rand for an umbrella. I'd rather get wet. <laughs> <laughs> rather get wet than have the 13,000 umbrella. <laughs> Honestly, I agree. I agree with that. More things from Rolls Royce. So, you know, the little Starlight headliner that mm-hmm. comes in mm-hmm. Rolls Royce. 280,000. What? <laughs> for some LEDs in the roof? For some LEDs. Ah, uh, you can go down to, uh, you know, <laughs> your friends. Pinoni, have, I promise you. you I promise you, you go to the East Rand, <laughs> you'll there. find some LEDs there. <laughs> not for 280 grand. My goodness. Uh, 280,000. That's obviously in the extreme case because um, you can you can get um, uh, creative how you customize that. But on yeah, in Boxburg, you can too. <laughs> Yeah, put there whatever you want for sure. Um, then there's uh, BMW is offering a Louis Vuitton luggage set for your car, which will cost three hundred and seventy three thousand rand. It's a brand new three series, really. Um, so you know, if you want to have a Louis Vuitton luggage set with your BMW iAds, there it is, three seventy three. Um, obviously, paint jobs are a big thing. There's some interesting paint jobs that you can get out there. Mm-hmm. Uh, Porsche is offering a paint job for four hundred sixty six thousand rand. What is the gold dust in there? So it is a bit special. It's a liquid metal paint. What is a liquid uh, metal paint? It's a liquid metal paint. That's all I know. <laughs> I'm, I'm assuming it's just got a unique option. Um, so it gives. No, we've got to find out what a bloody <laughs> liquid metal paint is. It is only uh, offered on one of their cars, to be fair. So if you want to take your. Um, if you want to make it even more exclusive um, on the Porsche 918, you can get a special paint job, which. Ultimately, adds value to your vehicle when you want. What to is something. liquid metal paint? So, for those who don't know, like me <laughs> and Wendy, <laughs> yeah. liquid metal coatings are real metal coatings manufactured using a sprayable tech at ambient temperatures. Using this tech, metal is coated into a substrate in a thin layer, giving it the look and feel of real metal, but it's just two millimeters thick. Oh, interesting. It's two millimeters thick, so it makes it, it makes the car a bit heavier, no? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. But it is a Porsche. It is a Porsche, yeah. Oh, there it is there on the screen. I mean, it's it's glossier. It looks like metal, but um, huh. I'm not too sure if I would... Uh, All right. Well, that's what liquid metal paint is. I learned something today. Yeah. Is it worth it? I don't know. Half a million. If you are buying a 918, I'm sure you have the money for mm. it. So it will add a little bit of value to your car. Then we have more Rolls Royce uh, Phantom Divider. So one thing you can get is a divider for the. Well, that's minutes. if you've got a like a butler driver, you know, scenario. Yeah, um, which is rumored to cost around five hundred sixty thousand rand. Um, then we have. Well, you can, I mean, five hundred sixty thousand rand for your own change room. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm gonna skip some of the other things. I'm gonna skip all the paint ones because I don't think they, you know, they're that amazing. But Bentley. So you know, in Bentley, sometimes you have that little Breitling watch. Um, which I, g- I guess is I don't know I don't know what it's for, but it's a watch in your car. Uh-huh. That's uh, an actual I think it's Breitling. Uh-huh. Um, so that costs three point uh-huh. three million. Which is an aviation watch. Yeah, three point three million for that extra. Three point three million rand for a Breitling watch. Mm-hmm. Okay, how much does a Breitling watch cost? Most ex- let's let's Google most expensive Breitling watch. Um. Most expensive Breitling watch, two hundred twenty-five thousand US dollars. Yeah, so so this a Bentley. This is a bit. This is a bit cheaper than that. Yeah, so this is the most expensive Breitling wristwatch. Is the Breitling Bentley Flying BJ two eight three six two? There are only fifty of this timepiece produced. Well, so it's obviously not that one, but this one is two hundred twenty-five thousand uh, US dollars. Mm. Whereas you're saying three point three million rand, which is just slightly cheaper. It's a bit cheaper. Yeah. Than that, yeah. So, yeah. At the top of this list, because we have more color things, it's a Ferrari LaFerrari carbon fiber front end, um, which will set you back a fat 6.3. That's a whole Ferrari. That's a whole lot of things. It's a whole house. It's a whole lot of <laughs> everything. Um, so, you know, extras can yeah. start to add up depending on where you are. But, I mean, let's talk about everyday extras for the everyday consumer. Okay. What are the most important everyday extras that are worth adding to your everyday car? Let's, you know, forget the Ferraris and the Bentleys and the Porsches. Hundred percent. So, what I are the what are the everyday extras you think we should? In my opinion, and I'm going to talk have. to the ones that I think add value to when you have to resell the car, um, and also it may be a creature comfort, but it adds substantially to the experiences that that you have. Okay. So you're thinking about extras as an investment. 
extras investments and extras in, into an investment of my experience of the vehicle. Mm, mm. I think those are the, the ones that I... Really which, which, which ones for you <clears throat> would be a non-negotiable? So any sort of um, um, safety features, so lane, lane um, uh, what's it called? Lane keeping assist. Yes, yes, yes. Um, as well as crash detection, those sort of things, uh. I think are something that everyone should, should add to the vehicle. Um, navigation, if you don't have navigation, well, you got Google, Google Maps on your phone. If, if, I think Apple CarPlay, you don't need you don't need navigation. If you have Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, usually uh. it is a sta- it's it's not a standard feature. So include those things um, to make that experience of your vehicle a lot better. Um, I think that's you know those are the ones that I'll, I'll definitely include. Well, for me. Um, I think the non-negotiables are definitely adaptive cruise control yeah. with lane keep assist. Yeah. I use that literally every time I climb on a motorway. Lane mm-hmm. keep assist and adaptive cruise control. That's one. Um, other features that are for me are non-negotiable, um, electric motors. Um <laughs> It's not an optional extra. I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> cheating. Uh, that's cheating. Um, um, yeah, uh, uh, air conditioner, but air conditioner comes in every car now. You don't. You don't yeah. really. I don't think you get cars that are um, uh, uh, fitted without an aircon. I don't think you get cars that have roll-up windows anymore. It's all yeah. electric windows now. So those aren't our optional extras. Um, yeah. So for me, the, the 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 comfort of driving on a freeway. Um, with little effort mm-hmm. with adaptive cruise control is probably the most important feature. I'm not such a massive fan of sunroofs. I've had a few cars with sunroofs. I hardly used them. I hardly use my sunroof. However, I'm glad I have one in the car because when I do use it, it feels Just say I've got a sunroof. Well, I don't open it. I don't open it all the way. I uh, just do the little... Yeah, the tilt lids. it. Yeah. Oh, but that's a cool look. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> so you put your arm out the window. I, I sometimes do. You know, those, are, those are features which um, I think add to the, the experience of the vehicle. Um, well, you know, another feature that I think uh, is, is pretty useful is, uh, um, is electric seats. Oh, for sure. For um, sure. Especially with memory. Because yeah. when you go get your car washed. Like I go get my car washed. And they move the seats around. I'm like, and you can. You, what's frustrating is you never get that seat exactly in the, in same. the same position as it was before, and you're always wondering. Mm-hmm. Whereas with electric seats, you just push the push the button, button and, and it comes you. back to to where you are. Another feature yeah. that uh, that is cool is, uh, and I experienced this on the Volvo C40. Okay. I think we spoke about it last week, and that's those LED yeah. headlights. Yeah, um, laser lights. The laser lights. Yeah, it. I, I've never experienced the laser lights like mm. I experienced on that car. And yeah. uh, for me now, that's a, a definite, it's a safety feature and a very cool feature because it, it just illuminates everything. Yeah, 100%. I have a list of things which you could avoid, but I'm going to actually, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read them out to you and then you tell me if you think it's worth it rather. Let's play a little bit of a game with it. So window uh-huh. etching. So this is when they put your, your VIN number into, I don't know, like the inside the windows. Um, I would rather do data dot. They so that's the mm. on the paint of the vehicle. There's a little identification. Well, they uh, they 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 sp- spray these dots in the in the car that uh, you know you can you can scan. Do you think anybody has ever used that to find a car? Is uh, like, uh, good question. I've never ever. Uh, nobody has ever been like, oh my god. I'm yeah, so I mean, glad cars I cars are dots. getting cars are getting harder and harder to steal. Yeah. Um, and especially when we get to the days of electric cars, it's going to be, it's going to be, I mean, criminals are going to become more creative, obviously, but, mm-hmm. uh, but they're getting more and more difficult to, to steal. Okay. Next one, rust, rust proofing. So this is to, you know, kind of ensure that your car doesn't. I think it's a standard, f- standard thing, right? I don't know. You don't need an you don't need an option for it. Yeah. It should be standard out the, out yeah. the factory. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Next one is key protection. So this is basically an extra in case you lose your key. You can get another one. I mean, does that happen frequently? Um, my car's key has the manual key that you pull out of the key fob. Yeah, yeah. And then there's a procedure you go through to get into the car with that manual key. And most cars have got that. I think a lot of cars now, you, you can even unlock your car with your phone. So yeah, I can unlock, like unlock my car with my phone. Yeah, so I think to some degree. But you need that. You, I think you need you that, have the key fob that manual entrance Okay. for the chance where your car absolutely fails electronically, yeah. you need to get in. Yeah. What about nitrogen for your tires? <sighs> I used to do this. Mm. Um, apparently it 
it helps um, with tire heat. <laughs> Does it help like in the wrong in the long run though? In terms of, I don't know. I've never thought about it for long enough. Mm. I think it's a gimmick. Yeah, if, it if, might if, be. If I had a really nice car, I think I would definitely do it just because I'm already there. Yeah. Um, but. I yeah, know. I don't know. Um, yeah. Is it significant enough? Yeah, I don't know. Tire and uh, well, theft protection. This one here, I think, is is definitely worth it. Anti theft tire protection. Definitely, if you have a bucky, because I've seen a lot of bucky spare wheels being stolen. Not mm. seen them being stolen, but uh, you know, heard of them being stolen. Um, it happened to my friend recently. He went to a wedding and he parked his car outside, um, and they took every single bumper, um, the side skirts, and his wheels. Like left the car on bricks. Left it on, on bricks, essentially. Well, it was not even on bricks. It was like on little... Trestles. Yeah. My word. Um, and this was... Yeah, I mean, he was in there for about an hour and he came out and in front of all... And there's lots of cars there, but they specifically... You know, Targeted his. Yeah. It was a VW, to be fair. Um, I'm sure somebody wasn't pulling a prank. No. <laughs> it's still gone. <laughs> they never pulled it back. <laughs> so, yeah, I think um, depending on the vehicle, depending on, you know... BW parts are always just. Oh, sort yeah. of after. I mean, one of the latest uh, scams, or should I say, th- th- thefts is, um, I think it's the GTI headlights. Yeah. You, you can pop them out apparently yeah. without being in the car. Yeah. Um, and uh, those things go for tens of thousands of rands. Yeah, hundred percent. Last two, roof racks. Uh, um, yeah, it just kind of makes your car a bit tacky. I think you have an SUV, and or if you like. I don't know, off-road and do that sort of thing where you'll need them, maybe. Mm. I mean, I've had roof racks. Uh, I yeah. used to have a Fortuna once upon a time. I, I don't um, think they will add to the value of the vehicle, no. in my opinion. No, no, no. It's, um, a, it's an extra... And, and I said they're useful in some areas. Yeah. But if you're going to permanently have them on your roof, mm, it takes away from the car, I think. For sure. And it's less aerodynamic. So you're going to have sure. high fuel consumption. For sure. Last one, rear seats entertainment systems. These are really expensive if you if you... You know, opt-in for rear this. seat entertainment system. Yeah. So you oh, you mean like a like a tablet on the back like of the front in the seat, back, which is not connected mm. to what's happening in the front. I, I think that those are redundant nowadays with uh, with with Samsung Galaxy and yeah. Apple iPads. Yeah. Um, you know, you get you get really cool um, mounting devices and. Um, you know, even the kids in the back can just hold the tablet. For you sure. know, so so I, I'm not so sure that that is. I mean, years ago, I think it was a good cool. idea yeah. when tablets weren't what they are today. But today, you stream straight to your straight to your Samsung Galaxy or to your Apple iPad. Hundred percent. Um, and that's pretty much all we have for. But before we go on sites, basically, for any car that you have, there are a list of um, all these articles which speak to the different features that you can get in your vehicle. Um, as well as how much they can add to the vehicle. So definitely check that out. Extras definitely <coughs> add to, to vehicle value. Yes. Um, depends on what those extras are. Yes. Um, but factory fitted extras. Yeah. I, I promise you for those out there who are thinking, I'm going to go put side skirts on my car. <laughs> Those side skirts <laughs> and your drop suspension is actually going to reduce the value of your car. It's not going to increase the value of your car. No. Aftermarket modifications don't increase the value of a car. Mm. It's factory fitted stuff that uh, that increase the value of your car. Also, your insurance, your your extras do have an impact on insurance. Um, yeah. So well, it increases the value of the car, replacement value, all those things. So it 100%. will uh, increase insurance. If you've got uh, um, you know Boxburg style a- extras fitted, it's going to increase the insurance on your car because it probably makes it more unsafe. Those are my favorite extras, though, the ones from Boxburg. And the the drop suspension and the side skirts give me, give and the big me. whale tail on the back. 100%. <laughs> <laughs> they do not add value to your car. I don't know, they have to be. Why? Why streets. do you want your car to look like a shopping trolley? My street value for the boys. Street cred. My street cred goes all the way up uh-huh. with those size goods. So yeah, here's Tokyo Drifter. To each their own. <laughs> <laughs> That's been much all the time. Apple. Thank you for joining me, George, and we'll see you guys next week. Cheers. <laughs>